has reached 23, 5 confirmed, 18 are suspected in the last 24 hours. Uganda has registered two more deaths. According to the Ministry of Health, six medical personnel have tested positive for Ebola in Mubende district in central Uganda. Three senior house officers, one intern. Since the first case of Ebola was confirmed in Madudu Sabu County, schools in this county have decided to provide measures to overcome this pandemic. Kakens Primary School in Madudu Sabu County, Mubende District, has installed and washing facility at every corner of the school as a measure to prevent the spread of Ebola. This should be also practiced by all institutions, workplaces, among others, as a key strategy in the fight of the disease. Today, the president of Uganda is expected to address the nation on how the state is going to overcome Ebola virus at 8 p.m. Henry Gwase, the University TV. Now I am more committed to the pipeline. Following the agreement that was signed between Uganda and Tanzania over the construction of the oil pipeline, President Chiro Museven during the 7th Annual Uganda International Oil and Gas Summit that was held yesterday on 27th September at Serena Hotel in Kampala on the theme harassing Uganda's investment and growth. He guaranteed that the plans to build a cross-border export pipeline that will carry crude oil from Uganda's basin, Lake Alba to Tanzania's Indian Ocean coast, will not be sabotaged because of condemnation from the European Union. Of recent, the EU Parliament had passed a resolution that called for the development plan to be changed, including redirecting of the East African crude oil pipeline to protect the environment, climate, and human rights in Uganda, where two oil fields will be tapped. The President, however, added that East Africa is moving forward with a program and emphasized that the European Parliament should pay more attention in solving problems of the people there rather than interfering in the oil program. An agreement of $10 billion was signed earlier this year between France's Total Energies and China National Offshore Oil Corporation to ensure development of Uganda's oil fields and to shift the crude oil through a distance of 1,445 kilometers to Tanzania's Indian Ocean port. According to the president, East Africa has got many energy needs, and therefore he suggested that the pipeline will be of great value and he inspired players in Uganda's oil and gas sector to support the refinery and the East African crude oil pipeline to be constructed in Hoima. Now I am more committed to the pipeline because it, it, it may be good for the integration of our energy policy, uh, our energy plans with the coastal, coastal countries and we in the hinterland. So therefore, I encourage the oil companies to, to move on the two, on the refinery and on the pipeline. Ruth Nankabirwa, the Minister for Energy and Mineral Development, told members at the summit that Uganda is at a point where the projects have significantly matured and Uganda will be processing how fast oil come 2025. We will be given an opportunity to play our part responsibly. So the expectation from the oil and gas exploration and development includes revenue generation, employment, industrialization, infrastructure development, among others. And to me, this is what I call the departure point for Uganda. She added that Uganda will be hosting the East African Premier Petroleum Conference and the exhibition from 9th to 11th May 2023, come next year, which will enable leaders to interact with potential business partners from East African states. As far as producing and exporting crude oil is noted, Uganda plans to build her refinery to produce petroleum products from both domestic and markets in East African community. Harriet Temaya, Ndejo University TV.
On Tuesday, 27 September, a game played at Chambogo Grounds between Chambogo University and Makere University Business School, where the host scored first in the 44th minute through Joram Lakuba. <laughs> Makere University Business School came from a goal down to edge Chambogo University 2-1 and thanks to goals scored by Sharif Sengendo and Benjamin Naza in the 86th and 90th minute respectively. <laughs> this is the first time Makere University Business School is winning at Chambogo's territory having drawn in the previous two times they have visited Banda. The victory also meant that Makere University Business School continued its unbeaten run record against Chambogo to five wins and three draws in eight games. The two will meet again on Tuesday 11th October 2022 at Makere University Business School territory Nakawa in the second leg of University Football League quarterfinals. I must say I'm very disappointed because I never expected this. Uh, but all in all, what matters, there is nobody win. Today we played rubbish, I will say that, because uh, the entire 80 minutes we were disorganized, we allowed the opponent to control, uh, to determine the entire game. Uh, I will not blame anyone, but uh, I will blame the attitude of my players, because uh, um, uh, right from where you go, you could see that uh, we may lose this game. But... Uh, Thank God that uh, I got uh, to know where the problem was coming from because I made uh, some substitutes which he added on and uh, at least uh, at home I will play at ease because uh, now with the 2-1 away win, I think we are going to correct some small uh, mistakes uh, like the first goal when you saw the, our goalkeeper relaxing. I blame my goalkeeper because it was uh, a, a, a six-tier shot where uh, I couldn't even expect to lose that uh, ball into the net. But uh, uh, a football game is a game of mistakes. Uh, good enough, we uh, reflected to our mistakes and uh, we got it right towards the end. But this is not the type of football I want my fans to see and uh, maybe I will apologize to my fans because uh, considering this is the first goal we've considered since we started this season and that is why I'm very bitter because it wasn't even, uh, it was uncalled for. But that is the football game and uh, uh, again I salute my players for understanding that at least we need to uh, lift our bodies and we go for the game uh, which they did all i have to say is it was a hard game it was a good game for the fans but all i want to say is yeah, it it was a hard game for us but at the same time it was a simple game because we had the lead throughout the game we were better we or good we were positioning only that as you saw the game is game at the last it was, we made some small errors but nevertheless we're a strong team, we're a better side, and all I want to say, and all I want to ask is, ask our fans of Chambogo University, please stay calm, be with us. We're still a better side, we can still take back the fight, back to their home ground, and bring back victory to our place, because you have watched the game throughout, we're a better side. It's a game of mistakes, all I want to say is, we shall rectify these mistakes when we go back for training, but please, we're still a better side. Today's game, at first, it was not easy, because... We, we've been on pressure. My teammates have been on pressure, but at the end of the game, we've managed to cool, to cool down the pressure, and that's why we came, we came back victorious. In the other upcoming second leg quarterfinals, St. Lawrence University will host Kampala University on 29th September with an advantage in the first leg. Uganda Matters University hosts Bugema University on 4th October 2022, looking to go through after an hour goal in first leg. And on 6th October, Uganda Christian University will host Nkumba University. Sala Chidabo, Ndejo University TV.